Hi, this video will be a brief introduction to the features of GDB GUI. First, we'll start by installing it. GDB GUI is a package on the Python package index, so you can use pip to install it. So we'll do pip install GDB GUI. After that is complete, you can run GDB GUI directly from the command line. You can just type it in, and it will launch a new tab in your browser. At the top, you can specify an executable that already exists. It doesn't assume, it doesn't know how to compile or, or make executables. It just simply takes existing executables and loads them. So what we're going to do is debug a file, a simple um, C file called hello.c. Uh, I'm going to use gcc to compile it. And I'm going to add the dash g flag. The dash g flag is important for GDB because it embeds debug symbols into the executable and the debug symbols have a bunch of metadata that help you debug your program and make the debugging process more intuitive. So now there's hello.a, which is an executable. So if I run it, it's a simple program that just kind of prints a few things to the console. But we're going to take a look at that as our example program. So here I have the um, path to that executable. I'm just going to hit load. So here we have the source code. Uh, we just loaded the file that was used to compile the executable. At the bottom is a terminal-like widget. It's running GDB. You can run any GDB commands here. You also see the output of your program and the output of GDB here. And here we have a drop-down with all the files used, all the source files used to compile the executable. You can click on them and then it will load that file here which you can browse and add breakpoints to. So we already have a breakpoint on line 19. You can click around here and add breakpoints. Let's just start running the program and we can explore as we go. So these panes are draggable. So let's hit run. This button runs from the start. This button continues on to the next breakpoint. So let's start over again. We run, stop here. We can hit the next button, step through the program. We can hit the step button, which steps into functions. If you call a function and the source file isn't available, the assembly will be rendered. You can step out of a function by hitting the return button, which goes up. You can also go step in, you can step through the instructions by hitting the next instruction button, and you can also step into calls by um, doing a step instruction button. So here's the stack. We're in the main function. We're in the in the file hello.c, and we're on line 22. We're on instruction address. This instruction address right here. You can see that we can explore the local variables. So we have one called greet, which points to a memory address, which corresponds to this hello world string. You can expand um, structures or objects if you're using C++ or some other language. You can view a tree view of complex variables or data structures. In this case, it's not super complicated, but gives you the idea of how that might work. You can also move them around. Um, expressions let you persistently view variables and watch them change over time. This is preferable if you wanted to like watch a specific field here because the locals locals get re-rendered and, and wiped every time you hit the next button or continue. All memory addresses are turned into hyperlinks. You can just click on them and then the raw memory is loaded and you can explore that. So you can see that this address points to uh, a bunch of ASCII data that spells out hello world. With the breakpoints down here, you can click on those and um, the source code will jump to that line. And we can also view registers. All the registers are available by name, hex value, decimal value. They get highlighted if they're updated since the last time you stopped the program. So these are the all the highlighted ones are the ones that have changed since our last, last time we hit next. Something else we can do is look at the values over time. So we can watch an XY plot as the values change. Oh, and um, we can also look at the output of the program down here in the console. So we just printed hello world, and then we printed i is zero. 
Now we hit next, and now it says I is 2. Um, S dot A equals 2. So we're about to assign this, assign this field a value of 2. So it's going to go from this random memory value to 2. You can see it started at some random value, and now it's down to 2. And now the same thing is going to happen for B. Right now B is at uh, whatever the memory location says that value is, and if we hit next, it gets assigned to the value of 1.9. And then same with C. And we can get rid of these plots by hitting the little X button. And if we want to step inside this function, we can hit the step button, and we'll say print, we print goodbye, so that's goodbye. pretty much covers the front end. Um, you can also look at settings here. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, automatically add a breakpoint to main every time the executable is loaded. That's optional. Pretty print dynamic variables. You probably want to leave this on. Refresh state after sending a command from the console widget. So if you prefer to do your next statements here, you can, you can run them there and then the graphical interface will update itself still. Um, you can change your theme, so you go from Monokai to default. I like Monokai personally. You can also show all the sent commands in the console. So there's some commands that GDB GUI runs behind the scenes, which it hides from you. But if you want to see them all, you can certainly do that. And if you click on a command, it'll automatically enter that in the um, input box here. So you can send that command or, or change it if you want. Syntax highlighting is on by default. If you're using, if you're debugging really big files, you might want to turn it off for performance reasons. And then you also get which GDB version you're using, the process ID of GDB for this tab, because each tab gets its own instance of GDB. And then the GDB GUI version that you're using, and a few links at the bottom. Thanks for checking it out.